Hello. It's working. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm gonna bring everyone back in. Uh, Alex and I have the honor of introducing our very next keynote. And to do so, I thought uh, it probably makes sense to bring us back a little bit. So I started uh, with Salesforce in 2010 at a very small bootstrapped software company. And I was alone, I was a solo admin. And back then, for those of you who were using the platform before 2015, you know that there were lots of resources. But those resources were scattered and they were hard to find. And if you didn't know what question to ask, it was really hard to find the right answer. And so in 2015, something great happened. So in 2015, Salesforce announced Trailhead. And that change, that was a game changer, not only for us who have been learning Salesforce, but for the history of education and actually lifelong learning. So we're super happy to have today someone with us whose name will remind you um, to the best place you can get the Salesforce hands-on experience or learn new skills, learn new features, um, and develop your uh, soft skills as well. Um, I'm really honored and privileged to actually announce this person because she's my personal role model, she's my hero, but at the same time, she's leading the group of super talented people who are writing those modules and projects um, that help us all maintain certificates. Um, like I said, learn new things, um, even get new opportunities like job opportunities, and also have fun along the way. Um, this is really like a magical person. I honestly have to tell you, like I have to quote or actually paraphrase Ralph Waldo Emerson when I say, this is someone who doesn't follow where the path may lead. This is somebody who actually just go and leave a trail. <laughs> and so, uh, without further ado, uh, it's our honor to introduce one of the most inspirational trailblazers, uh, someone who is constantly offering their time uh, and themselves uh, to everyone uh, in the community, uh, the bedazzling queen herself with her fancy sneakers, Chris Duarte. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Zoe. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Wow. Uh, someone have a tissue? Uh, thank you, Ottawa, and good night. <laughs> I don't think I actually need to say anything now. That was the most amazing uh, introduction I've ever received. What a gift. Uh, thank you for that. So kind. Um, I'm honored to be here. Uh, congratulations on having Canada's first Salesforce community event. I want to congratulate the amazing uh, organizers of the event and um, thank all of you for coming out to this event. Um, by engaging with each other and talking with each other, you're doing one of the most important things to be successful using Salesforce. You're connecting and building a community. And these are people that you're sitting next to right now who you can turn to when you have a question about Salesforce or you have a question about your career or you just might need you know, a, someone to chat with um, about something tough that's going on at work. And you're building this really great community for you to rely on each other. And it's where I've gotten to meet people like Zoe and Alex. Um, and so I'm really grateful to be part of it. Thank you for having me. Uh, my day job at Salesforce, I'm Chris Duarte, as Alex said, and my day job at Salesforce is I work on something called, sorry, I'm crying. Um, I, I work on this thing called Trailhead. And um, I've been so privileged to lead the Trailhead content team for the past four and a half years. We've done over 100 releases, over 650 public-facing Trailhead badges, another couple hundred internal badges for Salesforce employees only. And thanks to all of you in the incredible Trailblazer community, we just hit an amazing milestone this week, 15 million badges earned on Trailhead. Congratulations. But I'm not going to talk about Trailhead today, um, which might surprise some of you because I often talk about Trailhead. And instead, I'm going to talk about something that's really near and dear to my heart, which is how to lift as you climb. 
I've been so lucky to have such extraordinary success in my career, and I want to make sure that I'm bringing people along with me on that journey. So how do I help champion the careers of other people? And what I'm hoping I will do is inspire all of you to think about doing that too. So before I get into that, I just want to say, in addition to saying thank you to the organizers, I want to advance the slide to the partner slide. I want to say thank you to the incredible partners who sponsored True North Dreamin. Um, I know that Elements Cloud was on that slide and get feedback. And um, Jean-Michel's company, Sharon Picks, and the, oh, the, um, the big one, uh, Pro, Provar. This is fun. It's like a, a just shout them out. Just shout them out. <laughs> OK, try again. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Uh, thank you to the amazing sponsors. Without you, an event like this doesn't happen, and I really mean that. Uh, they rely on you to help make the event happen. Thank you for coming out, and all of you, thank you for stopping by their booths. So what does it really mean to be a champion? That might be a word that's new to you when you're thinking about, like maybe you're used to hearing about mentoring someone, but you may not have heard someone say before, you should champion someone else's career. And so I want to talk with you a little bit about what that means and why it's important. Now, when I was putting together this talk, I had this section here that was full of all of these impressive stats and metrics that were supposed to dazzle you and make you believe in the importance of a champion. And I showed it to my friend, Lee McGowan Hare, and she was like, Chris, why don't you just tell them a story about how you were championed? That would probably resonate with them in a better way. And Leah is, of course, an incre incredible speaker, right? Wasn't her keynote amazing yesterday? It's amazing. So when Leah gives you advice, you listen to her advice. So I'm going to tell you my story. I want to introduce you to my champions. Okay? I want to show you the people who have helped me in my career. So this is Sandeep Anote. Sandeep is the Senior Vice President of Trailhead Product, Credentialing, and Content. He's my manager. And that's Sarah Franklin. Sarah Franklin is the general manager of the Salesforce platform, Trailhead, and the executive vice president of developer relations at Salesforce. As you can see, they both have big jobs from the number of commas that are in their title. They're responsible for a lot of things. And they've been incredible in helping me in my career. So Sandeep hired me. Um, I wasn't the ideal fit for the job. I wasn't a developer, which is really what they wanted. Um, but he saw my vision and passion, and he brought me to Trailhead. Once I was on the team, he supported my wacky ideas, like a, a badge about a cat using chatter, called Catter. <laughs> Actual badge we published. Uh, he, he supported my wacky ideas about how to explain the platform. And then he rolled me back when my ideas got a little too wacky, like when I wanted to explain our product stack using a cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, Sandeep has uh, promoted me, ensured that I was paid fairly. Uh, he has supported me. I can say without a doubt that he is the best manager I've ever had in my career. Sarah has approved all of my promotions and pay raises. Uh, she's also put me on stages big and small. Thanks to Sarah, I was able to do the Trailhead keynote the last two years at Dreamforce. Uh, Sarah has put me on as a speaker at a number of key strategic internal events. She's presented me as a leader. She's invited me to meetings presenting to our co-founders and our top executives at the company where I present on Trailhead strategy. She's treated me like an executive even before I had the title. So when I think about what these two people have done for me and what they've done for my career, they both vouched for me. They said, listen to her. They trusted me. They said, everybody, we believe in her. She's the leader for Trailhead content. And really, they saw me in a way that I never saw myself. I never thought I was going to be a vice president at a tech company. I never thought that was going to happen. I didn't think I'd manage a 35-person team. I never thought that would happen. But they had a bigger vision for me. And they helped me see it in myself. And that's really what a champion can do for you. Now, you don't have to be a general manager or a senior vice president to do this for someone else. Because I've been doing it myself throughout my whole career. The reality is that all of us can be a champion to someone else by vouching for them, by endorsing them, by amplifying them, by coaching them. Now, I can speak about this in inspirational and theoretical terms, 
but that's not the kind of keynote speaker I am. I am a person who likes to get practical and tactical. So I actually want to show you some very specific things that you can do to champion the careers of someone else. Sound good? Yeah. All right. All right. And I hope you like the unicorn astro, because astro is just going to keep coming back. So let's talk now about how to be a champion. So like my friend Leah, I like to do acronyms. Um, and I uh, made up a framework uh, for being a champion, which I call ACE. So you can think about like ace in the place, ace of base, ace all up in your face, whatever you want. Okay, so ace. Amplify, coach, endorse. So let's talk about what this means. So when you're amplifying someone, you're shining a light on them. It's really important when you're shining a light on someone else that it's not about you. Okay, it's not about you. It's not like, look at me as I'm shining my light on so-and-so, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's not shining a light. You know, when Beyonce is on stage and the spotlight's on her, the guy shining the spotlight isn't like, am I doing a good job or what? <laughs> Everybody's looking at Beyonce. Nobody's looking at him. And that's what this is about, is selfless. You shine the light on someone else. You help somebody else. You help everybody else see them. And not just see them, but see their words. And that's where this um, repeat and attribute comes in, a, a tribute comes in. So you don't want to just repeat somebody. You want to repeat and give credit, right? Like I could have come up here and been like, yeah, check out my personal story that I'm telling about my champions. But instead I said, I got advice from my friend Leah to tell a personal story. See, I shared and I gave credit to the person who gave me the idea. So that's what it means to repeat and, att and attribute. And then you want to pass the mic. So someone like me, I get a lot of opportunities. I'm very lucky to speak. Uh, I get opportunities to present. And sometimes what I want to do is I actually want to give that opportunity to someone else. I want to take that moment and say, you know, this person has been really wanting to get on stage. And I really want them to have that chance. So I really think it should, instead of me, it should be them. So look for opportunities for you to be able to give someone else the chance to speak. Yield the floor to someone else. And that can be on a stage or that can be in a meeting room, or on a virtual hangout, if you're a distributed team. So the ACE, A and ACE is for amplify. The C is for coach. Now, people get very confused about coaching. They think coach is like a sports coach. What does a sports coach sound like? Screaming. Angry. Get in there. Attack. Be aggressive. Hit the puck. It's, a, it's a hockey, right? Hit the puck. Is that what you do? <laughs> Hitting the puck. Your puck. I, say, st st I don't know. Whatever. Uh, anyway, that. Okay, that's not what coaching is in leadership. To be a great coach is all about asking great questions. And then the moment that you finish asking the question, what do you do next? You listen. You listen. This is hard. So it's really hard for people who become new people managers because you spend all your time when you're trying to become a people manager talking and getting everybody to listen to what you're saying. And then suddenly we're like, now shift gears, people manager. Now you've got to ask good questions. You've got to listen. This is very hard to make that transition, but it's very important. It's critical. The part about offering guidance and advice, that's really only when you're asked. Or if you say to them, is it OK if I give you some guidance? Nobody wants to be talked down to. And what's better is when you're coaching someone, for there to, they need to get to that place on their own. Let them find the answers for themselves. You guide them there by asking the right questions. So the C is for coach. I'm still crying. The E <laughs> is for endorse. <laughs> the C is for coach and crying. <laughs> um, the E is for endorse. And this is different than amplify. So endorse, think about endorsing like this. When you're not in the room, your champion is going to vouch for you. OK? You're not in the room, and your name is on a board. Are they ready for promotion? Yes, they are. Your name is on a board. Are they ready to do the keynote? Yes, they are. Your name is on a board. Are they ready to lead that project? Yes, they are. Now, you don't say yes, they are if it's not actually true. <laughs> that would be a bad champion. 
But if they are, in fact, ready, you're the person who's vouching for them, who's recommending them. You're using your influence to help that person advance to the next level. So you're vouching for their radness. So amplify, coach, endorse, that's the framework. You might be wondering, like, how is this different from a traditional mentoring relationship? And the reality is that a champion will do all the things a mentor does. It's just a deeper level of engagement. And that's because of the vouching. The vouching is where it becomes different. So if you think about your traditional mentoring relationship, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings. They're very transactional in nature. We're talking here about developing a real connection, okay? A connection that lasts. A lot of mentoring is about those short-term goals, like the next like 30, 60, 90 days, maybe the next six months. This is about your long-term vision. Where do you see yourself in the future? And you may not even know what that vision is. Like, remember my story. I didn't really see it for myself. But my champions were able to help me see myself in a whole new light. I don't know if you've heard of this concept called Aikigi, which is a Japanese concept about kind of finding your purpose, finding your calling. Um, that is really what the champions that I've had in my career have helped me do. They've helped me find the thing that I'm supposed to be doing, which is working on Trailhead, which is helping make awesome badges for all of you. And that's something different that a champion can do for you because they're invested in your long-term future. Not just caring about your success, but caring about where you go and wanting to go there with you. So the next part of the presentation actually gives you some very practical advice. And one thing to keep in mind is that when you are being a champion for someone else, you need to meet them where they are. Not everybody is the same. People are at different places in their career. They're at different places on their journey. So you want to meet them where they're at. So I'm going to show you four people at different stages in their career journey. And I'm going to give you some practical advice for how to mentor, rather coach, rather champion, wait, what is the word? Champion each one of them. So the first one is a newcomer just starting out on their journey. The next one is what I'm calling an up and comer, someone who's been around for a minute but is ready to go to that next level. The next one is someone who's thinking about getting into a brand new career, like a lot of people are jumping to Salesforce as a new career. And the last one is someone who's already very well established and doing amazing things. How can you champion that person? Now guess what? These aren't stock photos. These are actual people. In fact, you might recognize some of them. Anybody recognize any of them? A few of you recognize some of them. Well, you're going to meet them all right now because I'm going to tell you their stories. The first one is this gentleman, Ricardo Perez. Ricardo is quote unquote, the newcomer. So Ricardo is just starting out. He's a couple years into his career now. Uh, when I met him, he had had maybe a year of experience. Uh, he does not have a four-year degree yet. I say yet. I believe he's going to get his four-year degree. I believe in him. Uh, he doesn't have a traditional tech background. Um, he, uh, the first time I met him, he told me a story about how he couldn't afford a computer. And so he sourced all the parts, and he went online at the library, and he figured out how to put it together, and he built his own computer. How about that? So, you know, someone who might look at Ricardo on paper, might look at Ricardo's resume, wouldn't really see that. But in hearing that story, I learned three really important things about Ricardo. First is he's really smart. I don't know how to build a computer. <laughs> and I would never have thought about assembling the parts on my own. Two, he's not intimidated about technology. That's huge. He's not scared of it. Nobody who's scared about technology is going to build their own computer. And three, he had grit. Grit. He's not the kind of person who's going to see a problem and be like, I can't solve that. Forget it. I'm out. He's like, I see a problem. No, actually, I see a solution. I'm going to build my own computer. As a hiring manager, that third thing, I want to hire for that every time. Every time. Because problems are going to come up. You want people to have that solution mindset. So Ricardo has this incredible skill set, amazing potential. So how could you coach? How could you endorse? How could you amplify Ricardo? So someone like him probably hasn't been to a team meeting before and might be scared to speak up in a team meeting. So one thing you might do to amplify him is give him a chance to present at the team meeting. You'll have to kind of guide him through it and help him build his confidence to be ready, but that will be huge for him. 
Another thing you could get him to do is join some project teams. Not lead them, but join them. Again, that's gonna get him getting comfortable with kind of the corporate structure, how we work together to get work done. When you're thinking about coaching him, some powerful things to ask him. Have you ever thought about blogging your story? It's very inspirational. You should share that with more people and inspire more people like you to come into tech. You might ask him, hey, I'm going to this meeting. Why don't you come with me and be a fly on the wall and listen in? You might pick up a few things. You might learn it. Again, like it might be intimidating, so you want to go with him so he doesn't have to go alone. And speaking of being intimidating, you wouldn't want to just send him a networking event invitation and be like, here, go to this. You'll love it. For someone like Ricardo, who's brand new, you want to go with him, introduce him around, help him get his feet under him. Now, it may not be that every newcomer might feel that way, and in fact, Ricardo may not feel that way himself. But as you're talking to people who are brand new in their careers and in this ecosystem, think about the ways that you might welcome them, and going with them to the things is a great way to start. Okay, so that is the newcomer. So now let's talk a little bit about the up-and-comer. And like I said, these are real people. So this is Marisol Espinoza. She goes by Sol. Now, Sol has been working in the corporate sector for a few years now. Uh, she came through the Year Up Internship Program, which is a program in the United States. Actually, I don't know if it's global. Does anybody know if it's global? It's not. It's, in the, it's a program in the United States that helps urban, high-potential youth get internships at Fortune 500 companies like Salesforce. And so Sol was part of that program. She worked in our Salesforce user experience team, also sales, known as Salesforce UX, and our Salesforce docs team. And then she came to work at Trailhead, where she is now senior project manager. She manages all of our Trailhead content releases. She's awesome. So also mentors new students uh, coming up through the Year Up program at Salesforce. Uh, she's now a uh, vice president of the Bay Area Year Up Alumni Association. She's incredibly impressive. She's presented at Dreamforce, Trailhead DX, and community events like this one. So for someone like Sol, she's totally comfortable speaking up in team meetings. We don't need her to you know, prep her for that. Instead, we need to prep her so she can get on stages like this one. Get her ready to share her story at conferences. Also, when she's sharing things socially, she's making all this great content, a cool thing we can do for someone like her is to tag an executive. Hey, did you see what Sol did? Isn't this awesome? So when we think about coaching her, one thing we could do for someone like Sol is to encourage her to apply for a leadership program. There are some really great leadership programs at different companies. There's some great ones at Salesforce. So we could encourage her to apply for that and write a letter of recommendation so she gets in. Another thing that I really love is for someone like this, you might want them to start tracking all of their achievements, creating what, what I call a brag book. That's gonna help you at, when she goes up for promotion. It's gonna help her remind herself of all of the goals that she's achieved. Might even help her to update her resume or update her LinkedIn profile. And then finally, for someone like Sol, it would be great to assign them to strategic projects that are gonna help the company at whole. Just get them that experience on things that are more complex. And instead of just speaking at the team meeting, she should lead the team meeting. She's got all the skills necessary. And that's great for her to get the opportunity to bring people together and facilitate conversation. All right. So what about someone who's shifting gears? Actually, how many people in this room? Anybody in the room making a career change, jumping to Salesforce in the last year or so? There's a few of you. Yep. Yep. So when you're first coming into the Salesforce ecosystem, well, first, welcome. It's great to have you here. Um, this is one of the most welcoming and inclusive uh, it, yes, you're nodding, you know, yeah. It's really amazing. It's one of the most welcoming and inclusive communities I've ever seen in technology. It's absolutely amazing. And so this is Aaron McGriff, who a couple years ago got laid off from his job, and he turned to Salesforce for a new career. And he learned on Trailhead, and he got certified, and he failed his certification exam, and then he went back and he took it again, and he went to Midwest Dreamin', which is the community event that happens in Chicago. It was the first ever Salesforce community event created by Eric Dreshfield, who's an amazing Salesforce MVP in the Chicago area. Uh, he came to that event, and he joined his local community group. He did all the right things, and then he landed a great job as a Salesforce admin. And on Monday, he's actually starting his new job, uh, he's going to be working with Allison Park as a Salesforce consultant at Slalom. Yes, that's awesome. You can clap for Aaron. He's awesome. 
And so when Aaron was trying to make that move, for him it's all about getting his social profiles in shape. And then you, as his champion, you can help him by helping share those out. And updates that he's putting on social, you can share those too. You can retweet them. You can help ele elevate him, get people to notice him. Encourage him to go to events like the Midwest Dream and or, or come to even the local user group and encourage him to do as many informational interviews as ne and network as much as possible so he can land that next job. And a great thing you could do for someone like this, a gift that you could give to them, would be to write them a recommendation on LinkedIn and then send them any cool jobs that you find that you think might be interesting to them. A little bonus tip is if you happen to know the company or you know anybody there, send them a nice note telling them how great the person is. Again, this is someone you're championing, so you want to help them to get to that next level. So the last person is what I'm calling the game changer. A game changer is someone who is already doing awesome things. And of all of the four personas that I'm covering here, this is the one who you might think might not need help because they're already so successful. Like, why would someone like Kieran Jameson need help? Kieran has an incredible career at Salesforce. She's a, a woman manager of an engineering team. Uh, she has a high-functioning team. She uh, just won a Salesforce Equality Award along with her co-founders of the RAD uh, Coding School. She writes a very successful and loved blog. She's created some of our most popular content on Trailhead. She mentors uh, people across Salesforce. She's built one of the most diverse engineering teams at Salesforce. It's 50% women in engineering roles and 25% Latinx and black in engineering roles. It's absolutely amazing. What kind of help does someone like this need? So for Kieran, I want her to be thinking about, you know, let's explore new topics. Let's explore new territory. You're so talented. You're so gifted. Let's help you do more. And I, when I get invited to something that's high profile, maybe she could go instead of me. Again, elevating her brand, giving her more exposure. When I'm thinking about how to coach her, she's got so many opportunities coming her way. I want to help her choose the ones that are going to have the biggest impact for her career. And then as I'm thinking about how to endorse her, she's ready to lead strategic projects, ones that are cross-team, cross-collaborational. And she's ready to come to the executive meetings. She might not be uh, feeling confident enough to present yet, but she should be attending so that she can start to learn the lay of the land. So those are the four amazing shining stars. And they just got there all by themselves, right? No, the theme of this talk is about champions. So we should see the faces of the people who championed them, right? And some of these people are in the room, actually. As we look at Ricardo, Ricardo came from the Pep Up Tech program. And one of the founders is here, Shauna Hughes. That's an awesome program. Soul came through the Year Up program. She made relationships all throughout Salesforce. She has incredible champions throughout the company. Aaron, his first mentor, was an amazing Salesforce MVP named Toya Gatewood. His cousin, Nivia Van Wright, works at Salesforce. Uh, Eric Dreshfield, who I mentioned before, was one of his early mentors uh, and champions. Um, and Allison, who I mentioned earlier, is going to be working with Aaron at Slalom. Um, so as you can see, Aaron has had a number of amazing champions in the community. And then Kieran, I'm proud to be one of her champions. I, I champion Ricardo and Sol's careers as well. I'm very proud of them as, of them as well. Uh, Leah has been an incredible champion for, for uh, Kieran along with Sarah Franklin Sandeep. I think as I'm looking at this, I'm noticing there's actually a few faces on a few of them, right? Like some of these people are championing a lot of people. Another thing I'm noticing is some of the people who have been championed are champions for others. Like Kieran is championing the careers of Sol and Ricardo. And Sol is one of Ricardo's champions as well. So we might extrapolate from that that if someone is the kind and is a champion for you that you might feel inspired to go champion someone else. So in that way, it pays itself forward. So those are four stories that I wanted to tell you, but I wanted, you to, give, I wanted to give you a chance to hear from someone else rather than just hearing my voice. Um, so I'm really excited because Allison Park is here, and she has agreed to come up and tell the story, not of Aaron, but of yet another person whose camp career she's championing. So Allison, give a warm round of applause for Allison. <laughs> Yeah.
maybe you could introduce yourself and then tell your amazing story about EJ. Absolutely. I am Allison Park. I am from the Chicago Ohana, so there's a few of us here. I think Cassie's still around. And um, I wanted to tell the story about uh, EJ Sherman. Um, we met about two years ago, and uh, we were at a tech event, and um, it was a celebration of all the, the classes we were doing throughout the Chicago area. And she and I just happened to, to meet up, and she was telling me about how she had taken, I don't know, a half dozen at least courses uh, in technology. And I was, I was impressed with that because she liked to code in her free time. But she just felt like she hadn't quite found the right fit. Um, and I immediately knew what she meant. And I said, hey, have you checked out Salesforce? And uh, told her about Salesforce, told her about the class we're doing, a BAM event right in Chicago. And um, thankfully, the next class we threw, she came to. And um, I was really anxious to see what she, she thought after the class. And uh, she ended up leaving the class just a little bit early because apparently she had someplace to go. But I was really worried that she was like, nope, this isn't for me because I just knew in my gut that this was the place for her. And so I reached out to her via email and checked in with her. And um, she said, no, I loved it. And I'm so excited. And I'm already going through Trailhead and loving every minute of it. Um, because as she later went on to explain to me is the job that she was in as an admin assistant she really didn't like, it was paying the bills, but you know, this got her excited at night. And this is something that, that woke her up thinking, oh, I, I get it. And I was telling her about my own journey to becoming a certified technical architect. And I said, I can see in you that you've got what it takes to be an architect. Now, you don't have to try and be there tomorrow, but you can work toward that. And as she was working through the trails and learning more about um, Salesforce, we also got her coming to Salesforce Saturdays, so along the networking events, which is an easy one for me because I love going to the Salesforce Saturdays. Um, and she met more folks in the Ohana. And she just couldn't believe how real this Ohana is. We, we tell folks about it at the BAM session, about what we do and how we network together. And it just seems a little bit like, oh, maybe if I see that, that's not really real. That's kind of the, the marketing pitch. And she kept saying, this, this is really true. This is real, a real thing. Um, so the next time we had a BAM event, she was one of our teaching assistants and was able to tell the students about her own journey. And recently, um, she got laid off from her admin job, but she had been doing all of the Salesforce work. So now it became real. And right now, we're helping her find interviews in the Chicago area and uh, linking her up with folks. So hopefully in the next uh, couple weeks, she will have her first admin job. And it has been hugely rewarding being on this journey with her uh, because we all remember how it was when you're making that career change or getting into your first admin job and you're just not sure of yourself. You're not kind of sure where you belong and how to connect the dots. But it's just um, something I encourage everyone to do is, is reaching out to those newcomers and bringing them into the Ohana, because we, we all know how that feels when we first come in. So, Chris, thank you for letting me share it. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> thank you. That's good. Being an incredible champion to EJ, that's absolutely awesome. Um, and helping her to get that next career, that's amazing. I wanted to leave you also with some advice. Um, and again, I'm, I'm big on tactical, like how can I help you with actual things that you can go and apply if you want to try this out. And um, it won't surprise you that I have learning for you available on Trailhead <laughs> on all of my suggestions. I mean, I might as well, right? So um, I have three main tactics for you, uh, networking, uh, warm intros, and then one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I don't actually need to teach all of you how to network like a pro, but you can help teach the people you are championing how to do it um, using this incredible badge on Trailhead and also just you know doing like what you're doing today, coming to this event, talking to each other and meeting each other, and then being part of your local community group, going to your local Salesforce Saturday. Um, I do want to call out one thing, the last item on my list here, which is to personalize your LinkedIn requests. This is a big one. Don't leave that boilerplate text there, okay? Um, make sure you write something personal. 
So um, for example, I invite all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn, but I want to teach you how to do it. You should say, hi, I met you at True North Dreamin'. Um, I really enjoyed your keynote on how to be a champion. I would love to stay connected with you here on LinkedIn. And so breaking that down as three sentences, um, you said uh, uh, who you are and where we met. Uh, you gave me some context for how we met. And then you made a request, which was to connect with me. And that's all it takes. It's just three sentences. What that does for someone like me is that it validates um, that you, you're not a, 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 one, a strange person. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, which is why, unfortunately, I can't accept it linked to all the LinkedIn invites anymore because sometimes there's, especially as a woman working in tech, it's a, there's some strangos out there. So, um, but if you do that, then I know who you are, and um, and I, I will be so delighted to accept your invite. So update that boilerplate text, and if you want to learn more about how to network and connect like a pro. Um, an amazing member of the community team, Sophia, um, wrote this awesome badge. Um, you can earn this badge. In fact, one of our amazing community team members is here is Tiffany. Wave to everybody, yeah. Tiffany. <laughs> so plug in that badge. A high five, Tiffany. Yeah. All right. Uh, warm intros. That's a huge one. Um, and uh, actually, how much time do I have left here? Oh, no, I'm not going to go forever. But, you know, I think this is more fun if I have two volunteers who are interested in play acting this out with me. Oh, Eric, of course. And someone else? This is more fun this way. Oh, sorry, Nick. Sorry, Nick. Nick and uh, Shauna. Come on up here, Nick and Shauna. Hey, round of applause for uh, Nick and Shauna. Ooh, I like that shirt, Shauna. Yeah. OK, so here's how this is going to go. I am Chris, and I know Shauna, and Shauna knows Nick, and I really want to meet Nick, okay? So um, I want Shauna to introduce me to Nick, okay? So let's begin. Hey, Shauna, I heard you know Nick. Yeah, I know Nick. I really, <laughs> I really want to meet Nick because um, the work he's doing at that school he's at is really meaningful to me. Would you be willing to introduce me? Yes, I definitely will. OK, let's pause. OK, so see what happened is I went first to Shauna and said, hey, would you mind making an introduction for me? Would that be possible? And then she said yes. OK, so I got, I got that done. OK, now here's what you're going to do. You're going to ask Nick if he's OK with meeting me, and you're going to give him like one sentence about me. OK, go ahead. Hey, Nick. Hi, Shauna. So good to see you again. Good to see you, too. So I have this amazing friend who would really like to meet you. Um, she's really interested in the work that you've been doing at the school. Would you be willing to meet with her? Absolutely. OK, there. So what was great about that is that Shauna didn't just immediately introduce me. She actually got consent from Nick before she introduced me, which is really helpful. Because Nick is really, like, he gets a lot of requests for his time. It's very helpful. OK. Lol. <laughs> okay. OK, so now what's going to happen is Shauna's going to do an intro, and she's going to put me on an email with Nick. OK, go ahead. Just speak the email. Yeah. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't at all awkward. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Nick, um, Nick, thank you for agreeing to meet with Chris. Um, Chris is CC'd on this email. You both are amazing, and I know you will make great things happen, so have fun. Oh, okay, pause. Okay, that was great. She introduced me, and she CC'd me on the email. Perfect. Now, this is really important. I want to make sure that Shauna knows that I followed up with Nick. And I, as the person who requested the intro, I'm responsible for the next email that comes, OK? So I have to be the one to follow up next. But I don't want Shauna to be CC'd on all our back and forths. Oh, where God, we're please find, don't. <laughs> <laughs> where we're trying to find a time to meet and all of that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Shauna in the BCC. So sit down. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> She's been BCC'd. And now I'm going to approach Nick. 
Thank you so much, Shauna. I'm moving you to BCC to protect your inbox. I appreciate the intro. Nick, I'm so pleased to meet you. Um, I'm a big fan of your work. And I work on Trailhead, and I think that we could do some really exciting things together. Um, I would love the opportunity to talk with you for about 20 minutes or so, sometime in the next two weeks, about some of my ideas. Would you be open to that? This can actually be real. I would uh, very much be down <laughs> for that. <laughs> 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 and scene. <laughs> okay, give it up for our amazing Trailhead players. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. So, you know, what was great about the, the, the request that I made to Nick is that it was very specific. It was respectful of his time. I said I only wanted 20 minutes. I didn't invite him to a six-hour thing. I don't know him, right? So was respectful, and then I, I was very clear about what it was I wanted to do. So this is, this is a great framework for everybody, and I want you to teach this to the people you are championing, okay? Show them how to do this, because not everybody, I think, understands kind of the logistics of this, but if you want to meet people, this is a great way to do it, and a great way to have people introduce you to others without causing any friction. Okay, so the last one is having a great one-on-one. -on -one. So you networked, and then you got the warm intro, and now you're ready for the meeting. Awesome. So you should just be on your phone the whole time, right? That's how to make the most of that time with that person you wanted to get 20 minutes with. You should be having all your windows open, doing multitasking. No. You want to put all of that away. You want to be on time. You want to end on time. Respect their time. You want to make sure that you're making the most, be present in the moment, make the most of the time. This is what you wanted. And then do your homework. Come prepared. Know a little bit about them. Look at their LinkedIn profile. Know what they're interested in, right? Make the time with them meaningful, okay? And again, we have a badge on Trailhead that's going to help you with that. I'm not going to cover these in detail. I just want to let you know that there are additional badges that can help you with all of the topics I've talked with you about today, how to make your resume great, how to define your vision, that's with our V2 Mom module, how to learn how to get up on stage and do a, a public speaking engagement, and how to do a great coaching session with someone, which again, is coaching about offering advice? Is coaching about offering advice? What, you ask good questions. questions, that's right, that's right, okay. So just a quick summary, the ACE framework, Remember the ACE framework? You want to amplify, coach, and endorse. If it seems scary and intimidating, just look at this. This is kind of what it sounds like. Hey, you know who'd be great at that keynote is Jacqueline. Hey, you should come with me to that meeting. Hey, did you see Talisha's blog post? It was awesome. That's what it sounds like when you're applying this. The more that you practice doing it, the more it just becomes part of who you are and the way you lead. Check out the champions and training tactics. And to make this super easy for you, I put together a trail mix just for all of you with all of the badges in it that I talked about today. You can access it at sfdc.co slash champion, all lowercase. Um, yes, you can take a photo of this slide uh, um, and hit that little URL and you'll get all the badges that we talked about today. I hope that you may be more inspired to think about championing the career of someone else uh, I have benefited greatly from having personal champions and professional champions for my career, and I hope that all of you will do that for someone else and bring them along on this incredible journey with you. And with that, thank you. <laughs> am, I supposed to, am I supposed to do questions? Am I supposed to? I'm supposed to do, am I, okay, so if anyone has a question, um, uh, can you can you stand? To, oh, you know, do I have to do I have to leap leap to you? <laughs> Nick, no. Oh, Shut Nick up. has really? a question. Are you serious? He's so quiet. <laughs> um, it's more just a, a comment. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm coming from a unique area of being a student. Uh, what an incredible human being you are. Oh. Um, <laughs> like. You, you have, the way my brain kind of works is I have this constant slideshow of images of people that I meet. So I met you yesterday, and this was actually waiting to meet Leah, and Leah mentions, oh, no, 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 someone else, you should meet Chris. So I just walk over, and there you are, your humble self, 
And in reality, if you wanted, you could tout yourself around as this big shot, because you are, but you, you stay humble, you, you have this beautiful homey sense to you. It's like I'm at home when you're talking. It's this amazing way of connecting no with the audience. Oh my gosh. Not ugly face cry, no. And it, it's just such an honor to be here to learn from you. And, and you. obviously, I want to connect with you. Uh, but that's just my feedback from my point of view as someone who's not necessarily in the professional field here. Well, thank you. I, uh, thank you. That's so kind. Um, <laughs> thank you. I'm trying to get better at accepting compliments. Um, thank you. That's very kind. I, um, when I was asked to do this topic, I just wanted to tell the stories of people I'm trying to help get to the next level. And then there's other people's stories I told. And as you can see on that champion slide, there are so many people helping these people. That's the thing about people who are successful. You just see the person and you're like, oh, that person's so successful. Um, but when you, it's like an iceberg. It's like when you look under the water, you see all the people who've been helping them get there. And sometimes their stories don't get told. Um, you know, Aaron McGriff is an incredible story. He was on a, a billboard and, and in the Wall Street Journal and in the New York Times. I wanted you to see the faces of some of the people who he looks up to, like Shauna and Allison the people who have helped him to get to where he is. So thank you, Nick, um, and I'm, I'm really honored to be here. Hi, hey. yes. hey, Zoe. I think you're great, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, the Keep a Brag book. Yeah. Do you have certain like ways that you're keeping that, like content-wise? Yeah, a lot of people I know keep a, a folder in their inbox, their email inbox. Um, and they'll, they'll save all their emails there. Actually, I know people who do that because when they have a day that's hard, they want to like, like for me, like if I have a day that's hard, I'm going to mentally go back to the introduction that you gave me and I'm going to think about like that. <laughs> you want to look back at the times when you, you were really moved by something um, and when someone maybe gave you some incredible recognition and kudos. Um, so I know a lot of people who keep an, an inbox um, in, or a folder in their inbox. Um, you know, you could certainly keep it in all kinds of ways. Google Doc, uh, Quip Doc, um, uh, any, any kind of document like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, hey, Chris. Tiffany. Love you, too. Um, <laughs> big fan. Uh, just a side note, I also I keep two folders in my inbox. I keep one feel good for me whenever I receive compliments and whenever I'm feeling down, I look at it. And I also have one for my team, you know, for each person. Um, so if something comes up, I write an email to myself, put it in that inbox, and I can sort by Great. date, too. Um, shameless plug, also, if you do the Trailblazer Community Group's badge on Trailhead, the, that was one of the modules that Chris shared in her Trail Mix. I have 11 more. So um, what do you do? Iron-on patches. Nice. They're iron-on that you can put onto your bags, and it has a little badge image of it with Astro as well. So nice. come find me. Nice. I just dated myself. I'm like, you don't sew them on? <laughs> you don't ship back. Oh, I remember them. sewing them on, yes. Dating myself, too. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Ann Parsons. Um, I have a question about how you build that culture and spread it and get other champions to champion other people and whether or not you just make it as part of uh, a component of their performance annually, or what's the best way to encourage that in a company? Yeah, that's great. Um, I, I'll speak to just the team that, um, that I lead. Um, and you may have seen it on the slide. Uh, actually, I don't know how much I called out the people who are on uh, the team I lead on the slide, but there were a number of faces on there of, of um, people I work with every day. And uh, in, in our group, we're championing each other, you know. Um, it starts with me wanting to do that, especially for people who are coming to our team, like Ricardo, um, who again is like so gifted. I can't, I can't even tell you how talented he is, but he would not be seen, right? He would not be seen if you just looked at his LinkedIn profile. But when you meet him and you work with him, you see his incredible attitude, his aptitude for learning new things, his skills. Like, that, uh, I get the chills talking about it. He's incredible. He has so much potential for where he can go next. And so choosing to champion him and then making that very seen on the team, like we are investing in this person 
and we, we together, Sol, and Cindy, his colleague, and Kieran, his direct manager, and me, the leader of the group, we are gonna champ, we're gonna circle this guy, and we're gonna champion him. And we're gonna give him the training he needs, we're gonna give him the coaching he needs, we're gonna amplify his great work, and we're gonna endorse him by making him a full-time member of the staff. When, when the team sees that, they're like, oh, I'm gonna do that too. Because here's the thing, the, the slides I had that had all these impressive metrics in them uh, that I was gonna show you. I'm so proud of the incredible work I've gotten to do on Trailhead, but if you ask me what I am most proud of at the end of the day, it is all of you, what all of you are doing with the tool, and it's the team that's building the tool. It's the people. And so to be able to help the people to advance, to level up, like that's something that's culturally in our DNA on Team Trailhead. Again, it starts with the leadership, it goes from there. So I'd say for you, like if you're thinking about how do I get started with that, I don't know if you are the lead on your team, you are. So pick someone to champion and start building that culture with you as the lead. Other people will follow when they see what you're doing. Yeah. And rewarding that behavior. Be rewarding that behavior, that's right. The reward is in the behavior. Like, uh, you know, at the end of my life, I'm gonna be thinking about uh, the, the people who I might have helped you know, the people who I might have helped along the way. I think time for one more question. I don't, who's the timekeeper here? Because we'll, oh, up front. Okay. Of course you had to be up front. Of course I did not wear my shoes. In those shoes, my, I my told shoes. you not to no, wear those shoes. Sashay over there. Kind of sashay across <laughs> this carpet. <laughs> oh, Ian, who's a great champion right, right here. Uh, I think for lots of organizations, particularly Salesforce, I think that championing and mentoring is in the DNA, but I think for many people in the organization, they're in companies where it isn't. So do you have any thoughts on how to pick a champion? Bear in mind, you talked about champions being longer term than, than not transactional. So it's picking someone who's, I know, your ambulance in traffic that's gonna take you to where you get to. So have you got some thoughts on if there isn't a DNA in your organization about champions, how you find those champions maybe outside your company? Yeah, I mean, that's a great one. I. I almost, want, I, I almost want Leah to talk about how you formed your board of directors. Do you, I mean, is, that, is it possible for you to maybe share that story? Yeah. Um, I just want to pass the mic. <laughs> I want to amplify you. Oh, okay. I don't think I need any more amplification, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I need the other direction. Tone that one down. <laughs> um, my, I call it my personal BOD, my board of directors, and it's people that I encounter in my life and so it's not just from the company that I'm currently work at, but uh, it's from different companies. So I, I think I was sharing with the gentleman earlier, um, I used to work at PeopleSoft. I was a software developer at PeopleSoft for many years. And there is this fabulous woman who at the time was a controller there. And she also happened to be female and happened to be African American. And I'm like, oh, I need to know her. Right, so I would be sending these emails and I would put her like on these group emails. I, 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 I called myself the Harriet Tubman of uh, PeopleSoft because I would bring together all the black folk and be like, look, we're gonna come together and we're gonna learn how to navigate these walls of corporate America. Uh, but we're gonna do it under the download, right? <laughs> so I would send her these emails and she would be on this email thread and she was like, who is this lady? She's got way too much time for all these emails. And I would like stand by the elevator, wait for her to come out. I don't suggest this because it can be really creepy, but have her tell the story, she's like, I basically, you know, was, was relentless in getting time with her. Fast forward, I am, you know, she is my mentor. She's currently the CFO of uh, Gilead. And she, um, and she asked me to do, she was being awarded one of her many awards and asked me to present her with the award and, and, and do the speech. So she was somebody that I kind of keened in and I was like, she's got attributes that I want to see. I want to I wanna emulate, I want to be. So I need to be around people in that space. So I've identified people where areas where I'm weak and they are good, I need to be in that space. So the first part is identifying where I'm not good, right? You know, and that, that's not always easy for people to be real with themselves in that space. And it's like, okay, I'm not great in this, Who's really good in this that I want to become better? So it's finding these different people, and there's some of it happens organically, some does not, some you have to really take that initiative. If it's important to you, you will take that initiative. So it might be, you know, being at networking events, going to see where they're speaking at, 
following them on social media, reading their blogs, and sending them an email afterwards saying, I read this, I thought it was great, just FYI, you know. So I think you have to be very vigilant about forming that board, just like a company would be. The companies are very vigilant about who they bring onto their boards. They're very, they're, they do a big vetting process before they bring somebody, they make sure they're, that's how you have to, when you're creating your board of directors for your life, right? You have to be just as discriminating and do, do the work. It doesn't just happen. So I don't know if that helped. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, Leah. That's awesome. Okay. And with that, we're done. Thank you so much. What's up next? Finding your tribe. So this is a perfect opportunity. If you're still here and you want to continue the story about Trailblazer community, stay here because we have our own Zarina talking about how you find your tribe and navigate your Trailblazer community. Uh, we also have do's and don'ts with Nick's, uh, Nick Panther. We have a um, session on uh, idea exchange. If you want to give your input, that's a good chance for you. Uh, and a few sessions about uh, cleaning your customer success uh, and navigating the flows. Awesome. Thank you.